Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to join you virtually today at the HR Tech Festival Asia. Today's online format is another stark reminder of COVID-19's far-reaching impact on businesses. And it has been more than six months since the pandemic reached our shores. And we've seen how it has disrupted our lives and work. In the hardest hit industries such as aviation, businesses have had to take significant cost-saving measures, including painful decisions to retrench workers. In order to stay afloat, even with gov in substantial gov support from government, we have also seen many sectors with new opportunities that have arisen right, for businesses. These are brought on by new needs and demands in response to the pandemic. And for these businesses, they need to pivot in doing so, reskill and deploy their workforce. In both instances, HR was thrust into the spotlight to provide strategic leadership on workforce matters, whether it was to implement responsible cost saving measures and entrenchments to plan and execute the reskilling and redeployment of employees to new job functions, or to ensure that employees stayed safe and continued to perform optimally both on site and at home. So I'm heartened to see the HR professionals in Singapore rising to the occasion. And the Institute of HR Professionals, or IHRP, has set up a COVID-19 task force comprising of HR leaders and professionals. So the task force has curated resources and toolkits to equip the HR community at large to navigate the HR challenges posed by the pandemic. Some firms have proven themselves to be innovative in the face of these challenges are the smaller ones. So take, example, take, take the example of Match Move Pay, a local fintech startup. Besides curating bite-sized app-based app resources to provide employees, to support employees' mental health being during the circuit breaker period, it uses a manager dashboard to aggregate and track anonymous employee sentiments as they work remotely so that managers can devise timely interventions to maintain morale and productivity. While we fight today's battles, it is equally important to prepare for recovery to emerge stronger post-COVID. At this event last year, I announced the formation of the HR Industry Transformation Advisory Panel, or HRTAP, to develop recommendations for a stronger HR sector that could drive business and workforce transformation. COVID-19 has accelerated this timeline. Businesses have had to reset and rethink their models of run. Some need to pivot to new areas of growth, but others need to transform their workplaces and processes to be more resilient and agile in the face of future disruptions. So businesses must also establish a system of safe management measures, even as restrictions ease. And all these require both HR, employee, HR and employees to adapt and learn new skills. So the transformation work ahead of us demands digitization to harness the best talent available to hit the, lead the change. And these require robust and merit-based talent hiring process, as well as measures that ensure workplace diversity and inclusiveness so that organizations can recruit from a wide and diverse pool of talent so workforce analytics can be used, can use data to solve this challenge by generating deep insights into organizations and job requirements in the new normal and the suitability of prospective candidates. At the same time, it makes business sense for our companies to invest in the local talent pipeline, the closest source of talent. The COVID-19 experience has highlighted the importance of a skilled local core for greater workforce resilience and sustainability in the event of major travel disruptions. In all this, HR has a key role to play. The profession must be ready to meet new and changing expectations from business leaders and workers. Therefore, the HR TAP recommendations are timely. Two key thrusts of these recommendations will guide the next round of HR transformation. So the first key thrust is strengthening HR capabilities 
for in organizations to support business and workforce transformation. Secondly, equipping HR professionals with emerging skills to be better prepared for tech transformation. So for Trust One, we will support HR capability building in businesses as they transform so that the two are tightly integrated. We will mobilize our network of stakeholders in the HR ecosystem to do this. For instance, IHRP and MOM are working together with sector agencies and HR experts to curate best practices, tools, and practical use cases in the form of sector-specific HR playbooks. This will guide HR professionals to address and solve sector-specific HR challenges. And we will be piloting these playbooks in the finance and food services sectors before expanding this to more sectors. So the government will also integrate HR capability building components into its enterprise support schemes. So one example is the Scale Up SG program, which helps high growth companies scale rapidly to become local champions. Under this program, people's strategy is now embedded into the company's growth strategy. So MOM and Enterprise Singapore are also working to provide additional support for businesses in implementing workforce strategies to complement their company's growth plans, such as mentors from the IHRP certified community. So for example, Jumbo, Limit, Jumbo Group Limited, one of Singapore's leading F&B establishments, is a good example of a scale-up company that recognizes the importance of building up its HR capabilities to support its growth plans. Besides appraisals and promotion policies, to select better talent to drive its regional expansionary plans, greater, exp greater emphasis has also been placed on training the overseas team in line with the requirements of the Singapore headquarters. So HR priorities are aligned with corporate strategy by incorporating HR targets into its organization-wide balance scorecard. So companies become better places to work in. They see stronger business outcomes when HR capabilities are improved. And the National Human Capital Diagnostic Tool or HCDT is a useful resource that businesses can tap on. It diagnoses strengths and gaps in human capital processes and identifies appropriate solutions. And to date, more than 1,000 companies have used the HCDT. One example is Scantique, a local furniture retailer which implemented a new HR system, an e-learning platform for their sales staff after identifying learning and development as a gap after taking the HCDT. Following a second evaluation, they saw the effectiveness of the new systems enhancing the firm's digital competencies, including amongst their older workers. We want more companies to benefit from HCDT. By 2025, we will aim to achieve 5,000 HCDT assessments and for at least 80% of companies that have done so to see improved scores. To, to encourage more companies to take on the HCDT, MOM will offer free HCDTs for up to 3,000 companies that are committed to workforce and business transformation projects. HR technology adoption is another key focus to HR capability building. In a study by Willis Towers Watson that was commissioned by MOM and IHRP, HR technology was identified as a key enabler for HR to deliver more seamless and cutting edge employee centric services and experiences, as well as, as, well as higher strategic value to the business. I'm pleased that IHRP is leading on this front and they have recently signed an MOU with the Institute of System Science of the National University of Singapore to develop a digital competencies roadmap for HR. Under this partnership, IHRP and NUS will develop training courses for enterprises to acquire the skills necessary to embark on digital transformation. The flagship program, the Professional Diploma in Digital Human Capital Leadership, will enable HR professionals to lead and execute business transformation projects. Now we move on to Thrust2, 
Willis Tao's Watson's study noted that almost 90% of HR jobs today will be impacted by technology. And based on the HRP's estimate of the certified community, 53% of HR professionals in Singapore will be affected. The increased availability of technology-enabled solutions and data analytics will elevate the value add of many HR functions, creating new opportunities. And these include the HR data analysts and the learning designer who will customize training and develop programs to suit different employee profiles. So HR professionals must be ready to embrace these new skills and opportunities for better career development. So in 2017, we launched the IHRP certification to set the benchmark for HR excellence in Singapore. The community is now 2,700 strong and growing. By 2025, we aim to have more than 10,000 HR professionals to take up IHRP certification or other certification recognized by the IHRP. To ensure that HR professionals can harness the benefits of tech transformation, IHRP will develop more and different training modalities for HR professionals to do so. And since August 2020, besides certification, IHRP is also conferring micro badges on emerging skills. So they are available for HR professionals to continuously acquire modular format in a modular format. And one example is the data-led talent acquisition skills badge. We aim to confer 10,000 of such skill badges by 2025. The success of this will be determined by the culture of continuous professional development across the sector. HR professionals in the community have a big role to play in driving this. The setting up of a series of peer-led communities of practice is an example. These COPs are led by senior HR professionals where participants share resources and best practices. For example, the ongoing HR tech has curated 49 learning lessons, learning resources, and organized a series of webinars and learning events attended by more than 1,000 HR professionals to help the community better understand how technology and automation can enhance HR. For HR professionals in roles identified to be at higher risk of displacement by technology, they can be reassured that there will be upskilling opportunities across HR across the HR ecosystem to develop new skills and competencies such as HR ops and tech and HR ops and tech and employee experience design. Through upskilling and supporting business workforce transformation, we will continue to elevate the HR professionals into strategic business partners and leaders. And in turn, this also means better jobs in HR. Today, we have 47,000 HR professionals in Singapore, about 90% of whom are local across all wage levels. 92% of them are PMAC jobs, which have grown from 85% in 2015. Over the same period, the median wages for HR professionals have also grown by 10%. And through HR transformation, we aim to support HR professionals to take on roles with higher value add and wages. So a stronger HR sector will put our businesses and workforce in good stead to navigate their transformation journeys in the post-COVID world. Let us continue to work together to build a strong HR that benefits our businesses and our workers. So I wish all of you a fruitful day ahead. Thank you.